In this video, we're going to review the last step of the duct design process, namely checking your friction rate and static pressure page. One of the issues with this particular duct design is that I'm using fairly large duct sizes. Um, a 7 inch round sheet metal duct for 86 CFM is certainly out of what most people would call the standard range uh, of sizing a duct system. But there's nothing wrong with the software. The reason this duct is sizing so large has to do with our static pressure page. Now if I come here to the static pressure page, I can go to duct page of the navigator bar and go to static pressure, I can go to the show menu, go to write the static pressure or my little blower icon. And when I look at the static pressure page, I can see that the total effective length of this duct system is 484 feet. Now that's the actual length of supply uh, branches, supply trunks, return branches and return trunks, plus, and this is what gets you, the equivalent length of each of the fittings the air has to go through uh, for each of those runs. Now with 484 feet of equivalent length, an available static pressure of 0.19 inches, that brings my friction rate to a meager 0.039. Now the acceptable range for manual D is above 0.06, thus the indication here that our friction rate is less than 0.06, or below 0.18. So with this friction rate too low, I need to make an adjustment. Now I don't want to override my friction rate. If I override the friction rate, the program will size the duct system with uh, sizes that uh, make more sense, but it will mask the underlying problem, my very high total effective length and my fairly low available static pressure. Now, the first thing I'll probably want to do is see if I can shorten this length number. Now, the way I can do that is try to create straighter runs. If this dogleg turn here in my trunk line is unnecessary, then I want to straighten it out. Or if there's another way to run that, um, I could do so. Um, perhaps I could run a separate duct to my uh, riser that goes upstairs. Uh, or maybe I could bring some of my uh, return duct in as more of a home run connection rather than a trunk and branch connection. Or perhaps I could simply use less restrictive fittings. I could try to use fan fittings that have a tapered takeoff or, or transition. I could use elbows with a wider radius and lower equivalent length. I could use takeoffs with those same transitions. And most certainly, some less restrictive boots. And remember, changing your fittings on the Doc Preferences page will automatically override any fittings that you haven't manually changed on your own. And that, in turn, will bring down this total effective length. And you'll see that my friction rate starts to come up. I'm still not above 0.06, but I'm getting closer. And if I look at my drawing screen, I now have a 6-inch run here where I had a 7-inch before. This run is still a 7-inch duct, however. As I look at my static pressure page, I see that there are basically two halves to this equation. There's the total effective length, which is the layout or geometry of the duct system itself. Um, and a lot of time that's going to be defined by the actual building, where you can actually fit a duct. Um, if there are options of uh, using straighter runs or fewer turns, you should most definitely take them. But once you've exercised those options or exhausted those options, um, your next best bet to lower this number is to use the best fittings that you can afford to use for this job. Once that's been done, the only other side of this equation that I can affect is the pressure. If I have access to a filter that has lower pressure loss, I should consider using it. And as that would increase the available static pressure, that would increase the amount of resistance my ductwork could then put on the fan, because my filter won't be putting that resistance on the fan, it allows me to make my ducts even smaller. And again, my friction rate goes up, and this time reaches the range of above 0.06, which gives me literally the OK here from Wrightsoft. And as I go back to Wrightraw, I now see I have a 6 inch duct on 86 CFM. Now, 0.06 might be much lower than you're used to as a friction rate. We here at Wrightsoft do have customers who like to use uh, a, a greater friction rate on their designs. Uh, you can do that, but it comes at a cost. I need to have more available static pressure or low to lower total effective length. It's possible that the fan that I've selected, whether it be a furnace or an air handler, is rated at 0.5 inches of static on a medium or lower speed that I might be able to go to a higher speed and deliver the same amount of air. 
by overriding this field, I can adjust this number up. Perhaps at high speed, this fan will deliver the airflow that I need at 0.7 inches of static pressure. At 0.7 inches of static pressure, my friction rate goes over 0.1, which is a, a commonly used residential design setting. So I probably don't need to go that high. I could try 0.6. Well, that puts me right in between the common numbers of 0.08 and 0.10. That gives me a friction rate of 0.9. Maybe that's what I'll use or adjust it up a little higher. Let me be clear about this point, however. This comes at a cost. If your fan is not designed to be able to move its airflow, the airflow that you need to do the heating and cooling you need to do, at this higher resistance, you're going to lose airflow by designing your system to experience more resistance. You can see that these runs here, closer to the air handler, are sized at 5 inch runs rather than 6, now that I have this higher friction rate. So in conclusion, if there's something you're not sure of, or something you don't like the look of in terms of your duct sizes here in right draw, it all has to do with the static pressure page. Your friction rate is a mathematical representation of those duct sizes. It's the number you would use if you were using a duculator. What the manual D is doing is it's calculating what that friction rate should be based on the measured total effective length of your system and how much resistance from your ductwork your fan can handle. If you have less effective length, you can use smaller ducts. If you have more available static pressure, you can use smaller ducts. You have options to adjust these parts of the design by using better fittings, straighter runs, or perhaps a different fan speed, or different fan altogether. This concludes our video tutorial on checking your duct sizes and using the static pressure page. Thank you for your time, and have a good day.